Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SANS webcast. Hunting Logic Attacks, a peek at SEC 552, Bug Bounties and Responsible Disclosure. My name is Carol Auth of SANS, and I will be moderating today's webcast. Today's featured speaker is Hassan El Hadari, Certified SANS Instructor. If during the webcast you have any questions for our presenter, please enter them into the questions window at any time. Please note that this webcast is being recorded and a copy of the slides and recording of this webcast will be available for viewing later today and can be found on the SANS registration page. And with that, I'd like to hand the webcast over to Hassan. Hey everyone, welcome to the, to the session. Uh, so uh, a brief about me here, um, uh, I'm teaching with SANS for like around eight years now. I'm uh, teaching mainly the web hacking course and I have just authored this course uh, this year uh, in like in 2020. This is the beginning of the of the second year for uh, delivering this course, uh, the bug bounty uh, course. And this is what this session is all about uh, today. It's a peek about the course and uh, coverage of some attack scenarios that are similar to the ones uh, that will be covered uh, there. Uh, I, I come from uh, Egypt. I moved to Michigan three years ago, but now I'm between Egypt and uh, Michigan. So I'm traveling around. It's winter here, so I prefer to be e Egypt at this time, but <laughs> it's uh, it's good also to be uh, there. Uh, uh, let me let me go through the uh, the, uh, the the session uh, uh, here. So mainly uh, uh, we are going to talk about hunting logic attacks, right? So logic attacks are the uh, beautiful part here when we are talking about bug bounty. Uh, when we talk about logic attacks, uh, we're talking about complex applications, how to analyze the application, how to deeply understand the app, how to manually dig into the application here and understand how it works. Every app has its own unique logic, right? So that's why it makes it different when you're testing every app. Every app could have its own uh, unique logic here. Uh, I lead a team of around 15 consultants uh, at Sisev. Uh, we got acquired recently uh, from uh, Sisev Security. And uh, the beautiful part is that whenever a consultant works with an app, uh, we gather the beautiful bugs and then we have like an internal technical meeting to talk about those uh, beautiful ideas. Uh, brilliant ideas comes out when you see different mindsets working uh, uh, on it. And it's getting very challenging now in modern apps. When you see modern apps now, developers are getting more aware of bugs, of uh, security attacks, and now it's getting more advanced to, to, to discover uh, tricky uh, attacks uh, over here. Um, bug bounty programs can help in this, right? Bug bounty programs can help. Uh, the beauty is that you can have different mindsets from different uh, 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 researchers. So uh, assume that you are you're publishing an app and you're having different mindsets from all over the world, right? And when when we saw different case studies here, it inspired us to write this course. Oh, look at this attack! Look at this idea! Look at that guy! Look what he did here! I have my own research in bug bounties, and others also have uh, resource amazing ideas. There are um, um, uh, state of the art uh, uh, written articles and uh, resources made by other uh, uh, pen testers and researchers here. The idea is that the researcher can deliver a bug to the vendor, and the vendor can give a reward uh, to uh, the uh, the reporter or the researcher. A t shirt, uh, tokens, money, my favorite one, <laughs> uh, to, um, uh, like sample or gifts, right? So everyone can have his e unique one. Uh, organizers for bug bounties are there, like uh, Bug Crowd, like HackerOne, like Synac, and others, right? Uh, integrity. And they act like mediators between the researcher and the, uh, the program. Uh, the beautiful part here is the uh, diversity of the mindsets that are brought uh, by uh, this uh, research. Uh, the course will talk a bit about the, uh, uh, we have like some soft topics here, like non, like it's not, it's technical, but it has a bit soft. It's not like, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be deep uh, analysis for apps and so. So we will talk about, for example, the Hunter's uh, Challenge, uh, and we, uh, we're also going to talk about managing the programs 
and reporting the bug properly. So this is one of the sections that we're going to talk about during the course, the Hunter's Challenge. So during my journey in the bug bounty program, my my uh, challenge was to find a unique bug. Yeah, this is the the problem here. Say so the to avoid uh, reporting bugs that are duplicates, right? This is the main challenge. So when you report a bug and tell you, oh, I'm sorry, it has been reported before. Ah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, it gets crazy here. So you're competing now. You're competing with different researchers, and you want to put and when you report a bug that's actually uh, unique here. So we need to think differently. You need to. We need to. We need to find a way that can that can discover a bug uh, that's not discovered by other researchers. Like finding the unique parts, finding a unique technique, uh, finding the. Um, uh, using our own mindset, right? Trust or trusting our own mindset to finding bugs that nobody thought about before. Because sometimes we think that, oh, I, probably someone got this before, so I'm not gonna go and get into this. And when we go deeply understand, deep, uh, deep digging into the app, when we spend more time with the application, we will have a chance to discover uh, stuff that are not actually uh, caught by other uh, researchers. Um, Managing the program is also a challenging part uh, for uh, uh, the, the vendors because nowadays, uh, if we just say, "Hey, this website, let's go, let's uh, let's make it public the first day and let people just go and hack it and report bugs to me," well, I'm gonna get like maybe thousands of bugs reported a day, and I will and I and I might not have the proper resources for this. So proper management for the uh, the program, assigning the resources. Uh, starting with uh, private modes, only limited number of researchers, and then going uh, up uh, to uh, to a public program. We're going to talk about that, more details about here, how to properly organize the program, how to assign resources, how to triage the reports, right? These are all topics that we're also going to cover here. So this will be helpful for uh, vendors that are actually hosting uh, bug bounty uh, programs and how to manage them to get the the most out of it, right? So and then and, and 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 that it doesn't utilize uh, resources or um, get into uh, uh, any uh, uh, issues there. So this is also one of the topics that will be covered during uh, the course here. This is the second soft topic that will be covered, and finally, this is the third soft topic that will be covered here, which is. Uh, reporting the uh, the finding. So it, it happens many times that researchers find like really cool bugs. However, when they report it, it has very bad writings. Uh, it uh, the the receiver of the report cannot replicate the issue, cannot um, uh, understand it, cannot uh, verify on it, and then it takes time. And that sometimes it happens that the vendor rejects the report and. Uh, it's not the uh, like the happy scenario here that we want. So we're going to talk about this uh, for researchers: how to properly write the report, how to write the proper PUC, the proof of concept, how to properly do the scenario. Uh, well, what are the players here? We have the reporter, we have the attacker, we have the victim, we have the, uh, specific profiles that should be here. Uh, this setting should be enabled. Uh, the uh, the this the credit card with this amount of limit should be used. What are the conditions that should be there? We're gonna provide uh, those details in this section. How to properly uh, do a, a write a report so that the receiver of the report can properly verify on it and uh, make sure that the bug actually is there. And what to do after that for the vendor uh, to investigate on the root cause of the bug and so. So we're going to talk about this how to uh, properly report uh, a finding and how to properly handle it uh, from the perspective uh, of the vendor here. And then after that, this will be the main juice of the report. This will be like around 85% of uh, the course here. And mainly we'll be covering different attacks. They are mainly related to app attacks, web and mobile. So we will talk about the attack concept. So this course is mainly made as an extension for the uh, the 542, the web hacking course. It's an extension, consider it as an extension. Uh, if anyone attended the uh, the web hacking course, the uh, 542, this will be a good extension to this course. And if you have also the uh, the same background, you will feel free to join it here. It's, uh, it's going to, to add uh, to uh, this knowledge uh, there. 
So we're going to go quickly to that uh, uh, through the attack concept. We're not, we're not going to spend time on like what is SQL injection, what is cross-site scripting. We're not. We are not going to spend time over there. We're just going to go real quick on the concepts and then focus on the techniques and the real life scenarios. Uh, look at this case study. This is what what's happened here. Look at this uh, amazing Sam Curry. What did he do here? Uh, look at uh, 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 Ty or Orange. What did he What did he do here? What Look at the techniques. See at the Look at the bypass. How What What's the are the lessons learned from this case study? And then after that, we'll be covering the real life lab. All labs in the class are real life. Uh, I picked uh, uh, two main versions of an app. And I have combined all the bugs in, in a single version. So I modified the codes to map the uh, the bugs. And we are going to investigate on those bugs. We're not just going to replicate the POC. Hey, this is an exploit. Let's do it. We're not going to do that. We're going to actually rediscover it again as if we don't know the bug. So we're going to say this is a challenge. Try to find a bug that allows a user to uh, disclose a finding of another user, for example we're going to do that we're going to do that let's see let's try this let's try that well it didn't work then let's uh, let's try in this technique we're going to do uh, uh real life discovery here uh this is the main um machine here uh that we're going to use it's a simple ubuntu it's a very simple ubuntu image here and it has uh this uh th this app over there the uh the bug tracker this is the app that we're that will be working on uh there and i have two main versions this is a uh, version version one and version two uh, and i've combined uh, many uh, uh bugs in the same uh, version there so we can practice on different attack uh, uh over here right so for example this is an example for authorization bypass i give you a challenge here this is the challenge uh i'm this is a story we have a test we have a reporter we have a developer and i want you to let one of the users discover uh disclose uh, issues that should that that he's not authorized to disclose i'm giving you also bonus finding the code finding the bug in the source code and that's why uh, we wanted to here to complete the cycle this course is not only for catching bugs it's also for defenses and finding the root cause of the bug in in the source code so we want to complete the cycle because sometimes you can find like code review people are away from like pen testers or or bug uh, or bug hunters or bug researchers so we want to complete the cycle here i want to uh, find the bug i want to understand the root cause of the bug what is causing this bug to happen here right and then we're going to uh, uh try to uh, uh first we're going to try to re reproduce the bug this is the, the steps that will be offered to here too and then at the end we're going to uh, uh work on the root cause analysis in the source code this is the source code here let's go there what's the root cause here see what happened here so we're going to uh investigate more into this it's it's a bonus but it's good to be covered here also the slides have uh, coverage for defenses whenever we cover an attack we're going to talk also about the defenses here so we're trying to complete uh the cycle and the puzzle uh in uh, this course uh over here mainly we'll be working with uh, burp burp will be our main tool that we'll be working with we offer here the professional uh version for four months so uh, you will have the pro version like we will work less like a professional for four months uh, as a, a trial so that you can uh, work on the labs later on here we will be using the professional ver the pro professionals uh, professional uh, features in burp uh, so that we can practice on uh, with a pro, pro version on real life apps here right so uh, we'll be using the uh, proxy history the uh, intruders the collaborator uh, search features uh, uh, CSR POCs, uh, engagement tools. We're, we're going to do. We're going to combine different features here uh, that can allow us to find the technique. So the the main focus will be on the technique and real life case studies rather than uh, the tool we picked. The uh, the most commonly used tool in the research community and it will be uh, the Burp Pro. Uh,
Um, let's talk now about uh, some attacks. Let's talk about some attacks here and how we can uh, think about it uh, together. I, I gathered here some of uh, the stories um, uh, from my own research. Uh, in the course, I will cover more topics from other researchers and also will pick some um, uh, of my uh, stories. I picked uh, some of my work during the uh, in the course. I picked some of the stories from uh, like uh, professional work during my work uh, as a consultant, and also uh, uh, from my bug bounty research. So I combined those two, and I also picked some of the research made by. Uh, other uh, researchers in the community and they refer to their research so that we can learn from them. I picked, I, I, we made uh, lots of research here to pick the good ones and I always update uh, the material with more references so that we can get more uh, from uh, the, this beautiful uh, area here. So let's talk about that one over uh, there. Uh, this one here is uh, bypassing authentication. We're going to bypass authentication. We're actually going to do an account takeover. We'll take over an account of another uh, user here. And this app was actually a banking app, which, which is scary, right? And I discovered this bug. It was I was in Egypt at this time, and I discovered the bug in two different banks. So imagine that there were two banks going up at the same time at this time, and I was doing the pen test uh, uh between those two banks and i was able to discover this bug thankfully i did that i protected my egyptian economy and so yeah so i did that and it was it was i was so happy to do that because when you have this when you do this research and uh you can um help your own organizations you can also help the community here to get protected from uh bugs like that so this is a CVE. It's in the retail banking. This is the internet banking, FlexCube, Oracle FlexCube. Uh, it's possible to take over account of another user. You can change the password of another user. Yes, you can change the password of any user by just knowing his username. If you know the username of another of another uh, account, you will be able to change his password. So this is what I did here. Uh, first, when I normally when I go to a bug, when I go to an app. I try to navigate to the normal scenario. Go first to the normal scenario, understand how the app works, and then after that, try to go to the attack scenario over here. So first here, this is the normal scenario. This is how the normal user works with the app. Uh, you enter your, uh, this is the forgot password feature. So mainly, we put our username there, and once we click on uh, next or login, the app is going to ask us about the uh, secret question, right? It's going to tell, hey, what's the secret question? What's your what's your configured secret question? And we're going to choose the one that we know, and then bum bum, enter the answer. And then after that, the app is going to ask us to uh, uh, enter our uh, new uh, password here. So now it's going to add. Now I now the app knew our identity. Now the app is going to ask us to enter the uh, new password over there. We're going to change it, and then we're going to proceed. Uh, on the right here, this is the screenshot for the HTTP request that is sent. The HTTP request that is sent over there. And you can find at the bottom that there is a body parameter. This is the parameter here. It's called field text and reference number, the one that has uh, this mar marked in red here. So field text and reference number, this one has a reference number over there. So the app probably gave me this, this reference number, and then I'm, I'm sending it back. So now it, I'm, I'm going to work as with an attacker. I'm going to try to understand how it works uh, over there. So now I'm going to work like an attacker. So I'm going to work as an attacker now, and I'm going to put uh, my, the uh, user uh, a name here of the victim. The attacker now is going to put the username of the victim here in the user ID field, right? He's going to put the user ID field here so that he can see what's going to happen. And then it's going to ask for, what did you get uh, uh, your first job? This is the secret uh, answer, uh, secret question over uh, there. Well, the attacker does not know the secret answer of the victim. However, the attacker inspected the response by just looking at the response. You can you can view that in the response. This is the response of the that, that came here. The response of this page. So it's it's like it's exactly the same as doing like right click view source or inspecting using web developer tools in the browser. We just want to view the response of this page. And there was a piece of JavaScript code here. Uh, there you can see here. This is document dot 
uh, from main dot field text and reference number dot value equal this number. So he saw that there's this field the text and reference number here, and he remembers this parameter, this name. This name is familiar to the attacker because he saw it when uh, changing the password, when setting the password. This this parameter was there, right? So what he's going to do now, he's going to take this uh, value over there and put it in his pocket. So this is what the attacker did so far. He just put the username of the victim and then the app asked for the the secret answer and the attacker just took the this value from the response and left. Now he's going to leave and then he's going to start uh, from the beginning. He's going now to enter his own username. The attacker now is going to, to fill in his own username and then he's going to click on next. And then after that, a secret question is going to appear. And here, he, the attacker knows his own secret answer. He's going to, uh, to put it there. And then the app is going to ask the user to reset, to enter a new password over there. And the attacker is going to put it. And then he's going to intercept the request using Burp, well, one of the magic features of Burp, to intercept the request, to stop it from going there. And at this time, the attacker is going to, to change to remove this parameter, manipulate this parameter value, and instead of passing field text and reference number, he's going to pass uh, the one that he got from uh, uh, w w the one that he got from the beginning when he got from the uh, the response uh, that came when he entered the username of the victim. When this happens, he will be able to change the password of the victim. Once this request is sent to the the app, then the app is going to actually set those this new password to be the password of the victim. Yes, this happened there. So th the beauty here is in, in inspecting the requests, in inspecting the responses, deeply understanding the business meaning of all the parameters that are sent here. What are these parameters? What are What is the app doing with those parameters over there? These are all questions that we need to ask here. And this is what makes uh, uh, like logic uh, bugs appear till today, till this second. You can find those bugs uh, emerging everywhere. Uh, let's let's talk about another one uh, over here. This one, um, the developer was trying to do some server-side validation, which is the best recommend, recommended um, uh, defense from this bug. However, the app was not doing that. The app was actually uh, trying to like hide uh, a sensitive parameter from the GUI. He was trying to hide this parameter from the attacker, uh, hiding it from the GUI. So let's see what happened here. Uh, this was uh, at and This was one of my research in this area. Uh, this is a technical support uh, portal, uh, mainly serving at and technical users, uh, users who bought devices, who are organizing uh, 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 like uh, uh, computers to, to their own uh, internal users and so so I picked those uh, this portal over there one of the tricks to find unique bugs in the bug bounty programs is to pick mainly uh, websites that are not heavily tested that no one would uh, would think about it right uh, merchant websites resale technical support website those kind of websites right uh, mostly vendors uh, give more attention to the customer facing websites uh, rather than uh, this, those kinds of uh, of apps there so when I went to this uh, app over there and I looked in the uh, device management here and I tried to investigate the app, understand how it works, manually inspect it. And when I try to edit a device here, I'm going to see a pop-up. You see here, this is the pop-up appearing over there and this is the uh, data for changing uh, the, the computer. Ignore those tags here. Those tags are just for testing XSS, but uh, I'm here doing a logical attack. And I'm, I'm investigating the in the response of this request, and I found here a piece of JavaScript code that's actually trying to call one of the URLs. One of the analysis here that we need to do when we're testing for, when we're hunting for bug, is analysis for the client side code, and we're going to cover this in the class API attacks and so. We need to cover the client side code. We need to look for there how to find the API request, how to find those requests, how to find those requests that could that could uh, could be dangerous to the app and mostly uh, uh, don't have the proper defenses uh, at the server. 
So this is a piece of JavaScript code that's actually trying to call a URI while passing a parameter called product ID. So when I try to intercept the request that is sent from this bubble, I found this parameter over there. This is an HTTP request, the supposed HTTP request that's actually uh, sending the uh, request to a computer pop-up. Uh, and this is the product ID that is passed over there. Whenever I find a parameter like this, I would change it, right? But when I when I change those parameters during, during my research in Bug Bounty, I try to register with testing accounts, right? So because I don't want to hack like other users, I don't want to get any legal issues here. So I try to register two different users here so that I can test my own uh, don't so that I don't cause any harm to any other users there. So if I change this parameter to another user and I proceed there, uh, I would I will be able to modify other users' product. And this was huge. This was a genetic issue. I was able to change other parameter values other than the product ID. I was able to even create child users on other users. So I, I would, this would allow account take over, right? Uh, edit billing and credit card. I was able to edit, not view. I was able to modify uh billing and credit card info of other users this was crazy it was huge right and i was at this time i was on uh, on the top of the top 10 this was huge. this is one, one of my uh good accomplishments during my research and bug bounty programs right so how much did i get paid uh i don't i don't want to talk about this because i don't want to complain from my payments issue here in this session but uh yeah <laughs> like five hundred dollars <laughs> Yeah, this is what happened here. But it's the, the beauty is the research. Uh, so I actually got on the top 10 for several quarters uh, from this portal over there. And this is what happened here. Uh, sometimes developers uh, create like complex IDs, complex ID to prevent you from modifying. You will, we will not be able to know the value of the parameter, right? So we will not be able to change it, to change this uh, parameter values uh, over there. Uh, this was done uh, on Google Orchid. This is this app is actually currently deprecated, but uh, uh, I, I like to, to still present it today. It has a good idea, and it also it reminds me uh, with the days where I got my name on Google. So I remember those days where I was publishing on LinkedIn. Now I'm targeting Google. Now I'm targeting Facebook. Now I'm targeting PayPal. Now I'm I, I was doing that. I just wanted to have my name there. I wasn't looking for money, so I was looking for the uh, apps that will probably. Uh, uh, not uh, will not be taken care of. So this was one of them. It's a social networking app uh, there. And I was able to find a request here that allows you to actually delete messages, right? To delete a message there. So this is a, a request that's going to allow us to uh, uh, send a request to delete uh, a message. And then I investigated the request in Burp to look at this request over there. And you can see here, this is the message parameter passed in the body. You can see one in the body and you can see one on the top here in the in the URI. This is also possible. You can see that one over there and that one over there. There are two uh, uh, ones uh, over here. But this is the one uh, that the app was actually looking for. So if, I, if you change this parameter here, we will notice that the message uh, got uh, uh, like we will be able to delete. Th this is the that actually the app looks for. If we change it, put any value there, the app is going to say, hey, I don't know what, what's happening there. So we need to uh, put a proper value here. What I did is that I picked the message ID and I filled it in this param and the message was successfully deleted. So we have a bug. I was happy when, when this happened. But whenever we report the bug there, we need to provide the complete attack scenario. And this happens a lot in bug bounty programs. Sometimes re researchers report bugs that are actually not complete. And this is not, uh, the, the vendors get gets confused because, hey, if this is actually a valid attack scenario. How would an attacker do that? Because it's not complete. The problem here is that the message ID is complex. It's a, it's a number that's actually random. It's not, it's not predictable. A user cannot predict a value that's actually a message ID that's actually that actually belongs to another one, right? Because it's it's pretty complex here. This, there's there's some overlap, but there's lots of numbers that are different. This is a sample for two different messages uh, here. They are totally different. Have lots of differences uh, there. So the the question that could be asked by the vendor: How would you, as an attacker, discover the message ID of another user? Well, this is a defense. Maybe the developer is, is doing that, and this is a complex defense made here. Uh, by the uh, by the developer the developer is making this on purpose we will not be able to know the user id of another uh, of another one 
we have a section in the class for chaining attacks. I have a slide here to talk about it, where we combine different attack scenarios here. You want to combine two different uh, scenarios in order to make the attack scenario complete and successful. So, for example, here we can look for a Google search. Google can help here. I use Google actually to help me find message IDs because I found the message ID pass in some URIs here and I try to make this unique uh, Google search here, Google uh, uh, to make it in the Google uh, uh, search query in order to find those IDs here. Because I did some research during my participation in bug bounty programs and did some Google uh, uh, hits. I found some Google hits that actually allowed me to have my name on uh, on other vendors i'm gonna i'm gonna show an example for facebook and twitter here by just doing google search sitting on the couch doing google search my name is on facebook right that's a, that, that's the case like so it could be like as easy as that but it all it's all about like finding the technique finding something different that no one would have thought about uh, there so uh, here, uh, this is siteorchid.com in your else, and, and I got those message IDs. So this is a this is a like a quite pro POC that I can acquire those message IDs, and it's not only a good, it's not like a good standalone defense uh, there. Uh, I got my name there on Google, so Google has different um, uh, uh, Hall of Fame lists here. You have the rewarded, you have the honorable, and you have the top 10. Those are amazing, phenomenal resources, phenomenal resources. Uh, they actually, actually, Google sometimes uh, give samples from the reports. They publish samples from the reports, and they give them as models. Hey, look at what this researcher did. This is his write-up. See how it's organized. See how the POC, see how it's written. They give some samples from their researchers. They're amazing, phenomenal, phenomenal researchers. Fair. I got my name. I, I was cute. I got my name here in this tab, and I'm happy with it. Uh, I got paid like around uh, $1,300, which is not bad because the, the app wasn't so critical. The, the bug is critical, but the app wasn't that, that critical, so the impact wasn't considered uh, like as as like that catchy. However, uh, like I like the. Um, uh, to have my name on Google, and I liked also the attack technique. That's why I'm putting it here in this uh, session. Uh, like like I said, Google search can allow us to get uh, more hits here. Uh, let me show some samples on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, well, here I was uh, looking for uh, links that are actually sent to our email. Uh, like Google Google dorks, like the Google hacking database. This is good research good resource here but i actually customize my own google searches so i build my own google search here in order to find the unique ones there so this is a sample here on finding some hits on uh on uh, links that are sent uh when i register in facebook if i register my um uh my uh, an account on facebook i will get an email right so i was trying to use google search in order to try to find those secret links here secret those secret links are being attacked by different researchers i have many stories in the class uh some of them some of them found a sql injection in uber in one of those links uh another one uh actually um uh, uh found another uh, bug there that could allow actually account take over amazing amazing hits in this area because those links are probably ignored by the vendors and and what i did here actually is that i found that some of those links uh were indexed by search engines this is what i this is what i found here and it was there i reported the the issue uh to to facebook if you click on the link here to uh, it's gonna say hey this you cannot log in with this user uh, simply log in with the user and the, is and it's disclosing the email address uh, over there so it was uh, uh, like an information disclosure uh, over uh, here and this one is here again on Facebook if you change your email address again you'll find another hits here that shows uh, discloses some email addresses uh, over there so this is also uh, one of the uh, hits here. So site here is to constrain the site and double quotes it's to uh, like exact match and in URL this is for to match the, what's in the URL uh, over there. Uh, Hall of Fame, I got $500 for that one. This is not bad, but uh, but they they just don't pay much for stuff that you get from uh, like search engines. So so this is another one here on Twitter. I was able to. 
to find uh, also stuff on Twitter. This is uh, in a link that is sent to your notifications in Twitter. And uh, one of the links actually uh, gives you an option if you want, if you want to deattach your user uh, name from the uh, email address. And I tried to see if Google search engines uh, uh, can have this uh, link and, it, and it, it was there, the, the, the link was there. And, and this actually worked. So if you click on the link and you click on, uh, I, didn't I didn't sign up for this account, it's going to deattach the user. It's going to work. The action is going to work. And this is actually, you can see here, this is a, like a secret token that was actually leaked uh, in Google search engines and it was uh, there. Hall of Fame, and this time they didn't pay uh, Twitter. Now they are organizing with HackerOne and uh, they pay a lot. Yeah, I know people who get paid a lot for that. All right, sometimes dev developers, they validate, they do proper server-side validation, so we will not be able to play, do our magic while playing with parameters. However, they don't properly do it. So let's see who uh, fall into this. So this is um, Market Plots. This is owned by uh, eBay. And what happened here, it's, it's like eBay. You can buy, sell stuff uh, online. And uh, I was trying to investigate on this website, understand how it works. It's a Dutch website. Uh, I remember uh, giving the demo for this website uh, in a sans class. Uh, it was in in Amsterdam and there was like police in the room and I was like, okay, it's, it's all bugs here are reported responsibly and they're fixed, <laughs> right? So what happened here is that I was trying to find attack entry points and looking around, looking around in the app, right? Looking around in the features, finding, finding features that uh, could be interesting. This is the remove jobs. You can also post jobs. But like like jobs like like not like Glassdoor and LinkedIn. It's like jobs like hey, I want someone to spray my car, right? And I'm gonna wait for people to bid on uh, there, and then I'm then I'm gonna pick the best bid over here. And if I if I click on uh, remove job, first I can create the job. This is the wizard for creating the job, and then after that I'm going to. Uh, uh, be able to remove the job, right? So I went through the procedure of the app. I went through the process of the app, uh, adding a job, uh, removing a job, right? So And then it tried to investigate uh, the scenarios uh, over there. So uh, if I click on remove here, I'll find an HTTP request that is sent here. You can see here the parameter job ID is sent uh, over there, right? Job ID is passed over here. And this is the HTTP request that is sent uh, here and space so uh, so it's telling the, the app that we want to remove this job here you can see those cookies here this, this is like the session it contains if you see here mp security this is like a session token so it's telling the app that this user actually wants to delete this job uh, here so if i try to change this job and this is what's so tempting to do i tried to change it put it with a different job id i use another registered account that i own and I tried to put the job ID here, the app did not like it. The app didn't like it over here. So I had to proceed without changing uh, the ID over there. And then the app is asking me again, hey, do you want to delete the job? He's asking me again, do you want to delete it? And I said, yes, I want to delete it. So click on delete again, and now intercept the request again. The request now will be a post. It's a post HTTP request here, post remove job, and this is the buddy here, job ID and the job ID is passed. The same URI here, remove the job, the HTML, but this different HTTP method like post and different body parameters. So the app is going to do different logic here. There's a different scenario going on the server. The app is going to get into a different logic code. And this is what we're going to do in the course. Investigate here on the logic scenarios on where did our request what is the server what is the server side code that's going to be executed when sending this specific request this question is important here to know what's causing the bug to happen right because when i send this request over there the server side code that's handling this specific request here is not going to validate on the job ID. It's not going to say that this job is actually associated with this user. It's not gonna do that, right? So it's going to pass. The bug is going to pass uh, over here and we'll be able to, <clears throat> to delete a job of another a user. This is the response that's coming here. 302, when you get 302 from the server, it means that we are getting redirected to a page 
and this is the page that we're getting redirected to uh, at this time i didn't understand dutch but when i saw job removed equals true i understood that the job was removed successfully here so i was happy i reported the bug and i was expecting lots of money there it's a critical one and this is what happened they thanked me a lot they didn't reward me because it was just reported by another researcher like a week or just a week and they sent me a hat to egypt and it didn't arrive <laughs> it wasn't the best experience but no problem we just learned so sometimes they develop the the app pr provides authorization checks by preventing users from logging in so who did that this is tesla uh this account here i was actually working on a pen test uh, assignment with a client and i was waiting for my testing account this happens a lot when you go to a pen test when you when you do pen tests and then nothing is ready right you go there and nothing is ready uh now the the good part of the corona that we do this remotely now so if not, something is not ready you'll just sit and relax you know in the couch on the couch right so not not just sitting there in the organization and waiting what do i do and so so what i what did i do at this time i just opened my laptop and just hey let's do some hacking here while we're waiting for the testing accounts and i thought that tesla is going to pay a lot for this they said if it's a good bug like ten thousand dollars all right I have a good story about Tesla. One of uh, Sam Curry got a great one here in the course. Uh, uh, it's a store, beautiful store, the XSS uh, bug there that's actually uh, covered here. And we're going to do more analysis on it during the course. So uh, here, if I'm uh, re return returning back to this app here, uh, this is actually a portal for organizing documentation, documentation for the cars here. So I see lots of Tesla cars here in Michigan in the motor city here so lots of cars are here and tesla is very common and uh, so this is the actual website for the documentation for for the for the car here uh it's not accessible by anyone so you, we have to register in order to be able to access this portal uh over uh, here um and uh if, if I register I will, and I pay for like, I, I, I don't remember the number, like uh, maybe $50 or something, I'll get access to like for two hours, right? So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to stay there for two hours. If I try to uh, log in again after uh, this time to try to access the documentation, it's not going to allow me to do that. So this is what happened. Here. This is the logic of the app here. So if I'm here trying to log in with my username and password, it's going to tell me no you're not able we're not we're not going to allow you to log in you have your registration has expired so if you want to log in again you need to renew the subscription we are already registered but we need to pay so we, we the system knows us but we need to pay right so i don't want to pay again to view documentation for a car that i don't have right I, the, at the time i have a, like toyota crawl in egypt right so it's, I, this is not it's different for me so this is what i did this is what i did i put i i looked at the request new password if you see here the tab here request new password i clicked on this uh tab here and i put my email address and i looked for uh links that could come to me over there this is another attack here on uh, one of the links that arrives to the email right the beautiful links there so i click i put my email address there and the and the, and the secret link appeared to my uh email into my mailbox and i clicked on the link over there and i actually got this message once i click once clicking on this link this is a one-time login for hassan and it's going to expire on that date click on the button to log into the to the site and change the password so i was able and now i'm able to log in i just want to log in right this is the attack because the app was preventing me from logging in and if i just was in it if i if i can just log in I will i will be able to bypass this control now so i clicked here this is a one-time login and this is the http request that will be sent over here this is a post request that is sent this is the uri parameters uh, over here uh, notice the parameters here are in url rewrite format like this is the id right this is the token it's passed here slash login right so this is not like a directory on the web server this is actually url rewrite format here one of the very common formats to be used here in modern apps and you can see here this is the uh, body parameter that is uh, passed over there 
once this request is sent i will be able to log in i'm logged in to the app now i'm, I'm logging to the tesla hassan is logged into the documentation i bypass the control right by just clicking on the on the secret link that was sent to me in my email when i did the forgot password uh, request well and uh, i'm still i'm still in i'm enjoying the doc i'm enjoying the documentation i'm happy that i'm reading the document right so when i reported this bug <laughs> this was actually a duplicate bug i wasn't paid for it. Ah, it's bad news Chaining attacks. We're got, we have a section in the class for actually chaining attacks. And this is one of the strongest sections there. How to chain attacks together. Uh, logic attacks can be chained with other attacks. And even you can, you can even also join different logic attacks together. And I have stories for those. Uh, for example, I can chain a logic attack with XSS. I can chain CSRF with command injection. I have a story for this. Uh, I can chain uh, open redirection uh, uh, with, uh, with with SSRF, server-side request forger. I have an amazing story about this in Venmo, right? So in Venmo, amazing, amazing attack techniques, amazing attack techniques that are made here. I'm going to share with you here uh, a story uh, that's actually applying chained attacks because sometimes the attack is not complete. The attack scenario is not complete or is not dangerous, is not very dangerous uh, when we just exploit the, the bugs individually. However, if we combine uh, beautiful bugs together, we will have a higher and more um, uh, uh, impact uh, there. So let me, let me show you here uh, a story. This is just a sample here. This is one of my research on gift cards, right? So gift cards allows you to create like gifts and you can fill it with uh, with money and then it could it will be chipped to uh, to your friend uh, there. And when I was uh, uh, investigating in this app over there, uh, I can actually register. I can uh, create a gift card. I can go through the wizard. Uh, I can change it, right? Change my information about the gift card. And I went through this wizard to create uh, a gift card and i met uh, uh i created one and then i went to the modify so this is what i did first i created one and then after that i went to the modify this is a scenario for this attack right so first i created the gift card and then after that i went to modify it and i went through the wizard and uh, i found one of the fields here that's actually accepting uh, text entry and i clicked on a save and i found this beautiful http request over there you're gonna find here two interesting parameters here. This is the parameter here for money for, for specifying what gift cards we are changing here. Which gift card we are changing? This is the ID here that identifies the gift card. Well, if I change this gift, this ID, it's gonna work. The app wasn't doing a proper validation here. I will be able to modify gift card of another user, right? But what I did, what but actually having this attack only doesn't have much impact well i'm just modifying i'm just annoying another uh, uh user another gift card user but what i did here was more dangerous if i put a script if i fill something bad in my uh, body in the, in the gift card this is the parameter here for the gift four which uh, gift four and uh, this is like the purpose of the gift a birthday happy new year christmas whatever right if i put here uh, a script code it's actually going to be saved and it's going to return as it is to the victim user so if, I, if the victim user logged in to the app boom it's going to work this is a bug this is a cross-site scripting bug right so we were able to inject javascript code to the app and the app returned the exact javascript code back in the response and then it worked but now it worked in a different context it worked in a different user right so instead of working on my own gift card i made it work on a different uh, user here so it had more impact so i mixed here a logic attack with with what's called with, with what can be categorized as self xss so i merged i chained the self xss with a logic attack and i was able to conduct this attack here i'm able to make malicious javascript code get executed in uh, the context of another user uh, over here right this is the uh the story uh here 
And uh, um, this is the last story I'm going to cover uh, today. But before I end the session, let me just do a quick uh, demo here for because this is what we're going to be doing in in, uh, in the class uh, stories demos labs, right? This is the main uh, actions or main activities that will be covered in the class here. So let me here. This is a sample for Etsy. So whenever I I display a demo here, I'm not like showing, hey, let's hack let's hack this site. We're not doing that. We're doing the analysis. So whenever we discover a bug in those vendors. Please do report it through the, their legal channel, channels, uh, their bug bounty channels, and report it there. And uh, if it's a valid bug, then uh, it will it, you will get rewarded. You can get Hall of Fame and so on, right? So whenever I, I do a demo here uh, or a lab, we are just uh, doing research and we're doing mapping. We're not attacking anyone here. So this is a sample for Etsy website. If you look here at the uh, listing URL, this is one of my uh, interesting uh, URLs. I can hold, I can open here uh, the uh, the questions. Uh, this is here in the chat, so I will, I'll be happy to. Have, I want I want it to be more interactive. I'm gonna look here uh, on my chat. I'm looking on my screen now on the chat. So please uh, put your questions uh, over uh, here I'm, or put your comments over here in the questions part, on the chat part, okay? So I'm going to ask you a question here. Uh, how many parameters do, do we have in this URI? So I'm looking at the questions part here. So please please feel free to add your, your feedback. So how many, how many, how many parameters do we have here? So Hassan, um, I don't think you have visibility into the questions window, so I'll let you know when I see any responses. But so far, I'm not I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, sure. I'm I'm looking at the at the chat now, and I'm uh, waiting for for uh, uh, for uh, interaction. Sounds good. So, how many do we have here? Do we have two? Do we have three? Do we have one? How many parameters? Do we have how many attack entry points do you have to the app here? Any idea? So I would count them here. Uh, this would be counted as one of the attack entry points, right? This is another one, right? This is the second one over here, the second parameter, and this would be a third one over here, right? So we have three attack entry points over there, right? This is another attack entry point. That could be uh, over there. Uh, another another demo here that I would like also to present when I try to investigate uh, purchasing uh, uh, like uh, uh, a cart, so uh, or pay, paying for a cart. So let's do that. Where's the payment part? This is the payment part. So what is going on here? This is a post request to a cart, and what is happening over there? What is this request actually doing? An idea, want to have more interaction. Am I looking at the right channel? This is the chat part, right? So I should see stuff over there. Yes, um, but I'm not seeing anything in questions or chat, so. Okay, all right. So this parameter here is actually, so if I have your post, you have your card, you have your ID, so this is actually an ID for the carts who are paying, we're trying to pay for a cart. This is what we're doing here. And those are the parameters here. Redeem action will be one, claim code is one, two, three, four, right? So this actually request to pay for a cart with a claim code. So the reason I'm presenting those demos over here is to look for, deeply understand the logic of the HTTP request sent from the client to the server and deeply understand the meaning so that it's so that we can uh, uh, so that it can guide us to send our proper attack uh, payloads uh, over uh, there all right any questions i'm going to open questions now so we have like around uh, 7 or 10 minutes for questions so feel free to ask questions here i hope you enjoyed the session and uh, yeah, I'm open for questions. 
Thanks, Hassan, for that great presentation. Uh, yes, if anyone has a question for Hassan, please put it into the questions window now. Uh, someone asks, what plugins do you use in Burp? Uh, well, I I can I can show here. Well, sometimes let me let me let me put the uh, group over there. So plugins here, like the extenders. Uh, well, it depends on the context over uh, over here. Uh, but normally the ones that I used are uh, the the ones for uh, uh, serialization attacks. I use one for serialization attacks here. It's called this one. What's called? Yeah, this one. I, I use those guys here over there. Um, I use some for parsing, uh, uh, parsing some, uh, uh, but now it's in, it's available in, in in the latest version of of Burp, right? So it all depends on the context uh, over here. Sometimes. Um, uh, plugins that uh, for uh, beauty of beautifier plugins sometimes I use them but now also in the JavaScript you can see that JavaScript is actually uh, beautified automatically so they try to embed all the commonly used feature in the latest ones right so JavaScript beautifier was very commonly to be used now it's getting embedded in the latest version so like I'm not like a heavy user of extender uh, of extender options uh, only those guys are enough for me. The proxy, intruder, repeater, uh, decoders, comparer, those guys are enough for me. I rarely also use the scanner, right? So those are guys are my main friends over here. So, Carol, why I don't see the questions? So, uh... Uh, well, I, I would have had to make an organizer, but that that is uh, the only question okay. I see submitted. So it looks like Looks like we're all set for today. Thank you so much, Hassan, for your great presentation, which helps bring this content to the SANS community. To our audience, we greatly appreciate you listening in. For a schedule of all upcoming and archived SANS webcasts, including this one, please visit sans.org forward slash webcasts. Until next time, take care, and we hope to have you back again for the next SANS webcast. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you.